God separated our ancestors into language groups at Babel to encourage them to migrate and populate the whole world. On Pentecost, God began a process of reversing the language division at Babel, bringing the nations back together again in one church through the miracle of hearing the message in their own languages. Let's examine this in Genesis 11. Had God commanded a family blessing for Noah and his sons to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth? But did the people choose to rebel against God and make a name for themselves instead? Is this kind of self-aggrandizing attitude still evident in the world's nations today? Now the whole world had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let's make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let's build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let's make a name for ourselves lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. What did God do? Was populating the whole world God's intent? Then the Lord came down to look over the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said if they've begun to do this as one people, all having the same language, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let's go down there and confuse their language so that they'll not understand one another's speech. So from there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth and they stopped building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babylon. For there, the Lord confused the language of the whole earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Who were names of note in the generations from Shem to Abram? These are the family records of Shem. When Shem had lived a hundred years, he fathered Arpachshad two years after the flood. Shem lived five hundred years after he fathers Arpachshad and had other sons and daughters. When Arpachshad had lived thirty-five years, he fathered Canaan. After he fathered Canaan, Arpachshad lived 430 years and had other sons and daughters, and then died. Canaan lived 130 years and fathered Shalah. After he fathered Shalah, Canaan lived 330 years and had other sons and daughters, and then died. When Shalah had lived 30 years, he fathered Eber. After he fathered Eber, Shalah lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived 34 years, he fathered Peleg. After he fathered Peleg, Eber lived 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived 30 years, he fathered Roy. After he fathered Roy, Peleg lived 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Roy had lived 32 years, he fathered Sarug. After he fathered Sarug, Roy lived 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When Sarug had lived 30 years, he fathered Nahor. After he fathered Nahor, Sarug lived 200 years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahor had lived 29 years, he fathered Terah. After he fathered Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and had other sons and daughters. When Terah lived 70 years, he fathered Abram, Nahor, and Haran. What happened to Abram's family, including his father Terah? Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, 
and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came into Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. God separated our ancestors into language groups at Babel to encourage them to migrate and populate the whole world. On Pentecost, God began a process of reversing the language division at Babel, bringing the nations back together again in one church through the miracle of hearing the message in their own languages. What's our attitude towards foreigners? You decide.